Welcome to the eighth chapter of the book of Proverbs. Wisdom calls. I'll read some in the Greek, then we'll go into the uh, proverb. See, teen sophian kirixis, in a furnace see hipakusi, epigar ton ypsilon arcon estin, on a mason they ton trivon estike. You shall proclaim wisdom that intellect should obey you. Uh, I think that's a wonderful saying, proclaiming wisdom that intellect should obey you. If you have a wisdom of God, you have a lot more than some of the smartest, highest intellect people in the world. I would think that if you had a tremendous intellect, but you didn't have the wisdom, and wisdom is basically of God. If you don't have God, you don't believe in God, you can be somebody like a David Hawking who is trying to figure out all these things out in outer space and how everything works and where the uh, world came from. But I would think that that would really frustrate you because you really can't go very far in that direction outward and try to understand the things of God without God's wisdom. So we, the Christians, proclaim the wisdom of Christ that intelligent people should obey us. And then it says, For she is upon the high extremities, and the feminine she, uh, and she stands in the midst of the paths. So wisdom is everywhere, basically. You can have wisdom if you're in some country that's highly regulated and people can't read the Bible, that if you can find it and you have this wisdom, you can have it there. And no matter where you're at. Now, from here on, we have uh, some verses that are what I call the personification of wisdom. And I believe the height of that is that Jesus is wisdom. But this personification that we'll see is uh, that Wisdom, it stands, and these are all figures of speech. Wisdom occupies. Wisdom sings. Wisdom comforts. Wisdom has a voice, a throat, a mouth. And wisdom talks about itself. At it, first person, I, and wisdom walks. Here we have the first one. She, uh, wisdom stands. For by the gates of mighty ones, she is occupied. And there we have occupying. Now, how does wisdom is with the ones, now, a mighty one without God? Well, I suppose you can still have a person that has some wisdom. It's not only Christians, but the wisdom of God, of Christ, is higher. And and the India entrances sing. So here again, she sings, saying, and you can see this as a kind of a song. You, O men, I comfort and I let go with my voice to the sons of men. So it comforts and it has a voice. Comprehend, O guileless ones, astuteness, and O uninstructed, ins insert it in the heart. If you Grown have a, if you're a simple person, comprehend uh, the astuteness, understanding what wisdom gives you, gives me. And when we understand what wisdom is, it's Christ, then uh, even the in, uninstructed insert it in the heart. Again, the heart not being the muscle, but a word that they use for a place within the, the psyche, the life of a person, where these thoughts and things were um, put. Uh, listen to me, for I shall speak serious things. So now she speaks in, through the Word and through God's uh, miraculous way of coming into us, Holy Spirit. And I will offer straight things from my lips. So here she has lips. 
for my throat, there's a throat, shall meditate truth. The wisdom, the true wisdom is the truth. Now, you can have a wise person. It seems like he's a wise person, but he could just be giving out a lot of false information because his acceptance as being an intelligent person, has a Ph.D., and so, therefore, everything he says has to be correct. Well, absolutely not. Maybe, maybe not. And lying lips are abhorrent before me. And God doesn't want the lying lips. All the sayings of my mouth are with righteousness. And it has my mouth speaking here. Nothing in them is crooked nor insidious. All is face to face to the ones perceiving and straight to the ones finding knowledge. Receive instruction and not silver, and knowledge above gold being tried. Instruction of God, the knowledge of God above any material thing, really. For wisdom is better than very costly stones, and every esteemed thing is not worth her. And Jesus talks about the pearl of a great price that the man found and uh, bought the land and so forth, and esteemed that the wisdom of God uh, is something high. I esteem the Word of God highly. I, to me, it's worth everything uh, to have uh, the wisdom of God. And I, we all do. With the Bible, you can start going through here. The wisdom of God will go right into you. It's an impossibility that it wouldn't unless you're really not open to believing the things of the Word. You're just going through uh, the um, act of reading God's Word as a rote um, effort. But if you're going through it to learn about God, then He will give you the wisdom. Now, I, here's the, another I, personification of an I. I, as a, like a human, a, li a living creature of some sort, I, wisdom, encamped with counsel and knowledge, and I called upon reflection. So, wisdom, we have counseling, we have the knowledge of things that are going on, and we look at these things and try to decide what does God want in our life with all the counsel of other people, relatives and uh, uh, people who teach God's Word and so forth. The fear of the Lord detests injustice. Insolence also and pride. So many places the pride is uh, detested by God, and it's a thing that the world lifts up as something to have. Be prideful, be proud of what you're doing, and so forth. And the ways of evil ones, I, and I have detected the perverting ways of evil men. I put the italicize that because there's no men in there. Uh, uh, the perverting ways of evil ones maybe would be better. Now, in 14, we go on down, and I see wisdom. Now we get, we are listed the attributes of wisdom, counsel, intelligence, safety, strength, wealth, glory. Who doesn't want all of those things? Counsel and safety are mine. Safety is wonderful, doing things going through life with the wisdom of God, keeping us out of harm's way. And intelligence is mine, and we see things in a different way the world sees them. And strength is mine. Uh, a person becomes strong, and not necessarily physically strong, but their, uh, uh, what you would call it, their, their demeanor, uh, the way they put the, present themselves, because <clears throat> they have wisdom, 
the truth, all these things. When you have all these things, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be very difficult for people not to see him, I believe. By me, kings reign. Uh, God puts people in charge of government, and the mighty ones, the naste, generally has to do with soldiers and so forth, they write righteousness. Through me, great men become magnified and sovereigns. Through me, take hold of the earth. And I, again, the me here is Jesus. I look at wisdom as being Jesus, and we'll see in a few, few verses uh, how that plays out. I love the ones being fond of me, and the ones seeking me shall find favor. And Jesus says that the ones loving me above all, uh, he will raise that person up in the next life in front of the angels and God. Wealth and glory exist to me, and much property and righteousness. Person with God, walking with God. Well, that's a hard one here. Uh, I, I suppose the health and wealth um, evangelist would like to bring this one out that you have much glory and property and all these things, which many Christians do. Best to gather my fruit over gold and precious stone. And my produce, vegetables and fruits, better than choice silver. And his produce is uh, what we live on. Jesus said that uh, the disciples came back and mentioned about it. he had food that they did not know of in doing his, the Father's will. I walk in the ways of righteousness, and this here certainly fits Jesus. And I return in the midst of paths of reason. Reason is uh, interesting. I think this is one of the first places we have come across reason. There's a 820, it says, uh, and righteousness and truth and these other uh, Complutensian polyglot has righteousness and the Aldine has truth. And I return in the midst of paths of reason that I shall portion substance to the ones loving me, which God does give to us the believers in Jesus Christ, and their treasuries I shall fill up of good things. And God certainly does that. If I should announce to you the things happening each day, I'll, I will remember also to count the things from out of the eon. Jesus has not just told us what we need for the daily uh, routine of life, but he shows us the things of the coming eon, the coming age, New Jerusalem, all sorts of wonderful, beautiful things. Now, origin of wisdom. The Lord created me the head of his ways, the arcane. Arcane, this is in... Um, we see uh, the archi in the beginning was the, the archi, the beginning, was God. And he created me the lead of his way, head of his ways for his works. We see in 1 Corinthians 1.30, But you are of him in Christ Jesus, who became wisdom to us from God. So Jesus is, he became wisdom. He is wisdom came, appeared for a short period of time on earth, and he spoke, and people wrote this down, and we're still studying it all today. In Ephesians 1.8, Paul says, which he abounded in us in all wisdom and intelligence. So this is what God gives to the believer. Colossians 2.2, 2, Paul says, 
in whom are all the treasuries, treasures of the wisdom and of the knowledge concealed. And he's talking about the mystery of the God and Father and of the Christ. So this is the wisdom and the knowledge comes to us. Colossians 3.16, Let the word of the Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. The word tied in to wisdom. In James 3.17, But the wisdom from above first indeed is pure. Thereupon it's peaceable, lenient, obeys readily, full of mercy, and good fruits, impartial, and uh, unpretentious. So all these things. Go up to 23. Before the Aeonos, he founded me in the beginning, the Archi. Here's the same word, 746. The Lord created me, the, could be the beginning of his ways. Uh, before the eon, he founded me in the beginning, before the making, the earth. And we see in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, the archi was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This one was in the beginning with God. Jesus was at the beginning in the creation. Now, Jesus is what man can see and take in. There are things of God that are way beyond what man can take in. We see uh, other things. We have a, a glimpse into heaven about archangels and seraphim and cherubim and um, the different angels and things like that. We, we see it a little bit. But when we are further down the line, we'll see it all clearly. We don't see God in all these things. You only see what Jesus brought forth from the Father. He says, I came from the Father. He was the first alien, came to the earth, and he made known to people and proved it by all sorts of miracles that he was able to do all the things that he said. But we don't see the fullness of God. We see Christ and we read about him. And, uh, and before the making, the abysses, which is in Genesis, right in the beginning of the abyss, before the coming forth of the springs of waters, before the seeding of the mountains, and before all the hills, he engenders me. Now, Genia, Jesus engendered, I, he's the son of God, so he was engendered to Mary, took a form of a human, and so that is a form of engendering. He just didn't magically appear, and here he is. <clears throat> the Lord made regions and uninhabited places and uttermost parts of the inhabitable world under the heavens. Now it goes in more into detail. When he prepared the heaven, I was present with him, Jesus was. And when he separated his throne upon the winds, when he made the upward cloud strong, and as he made the springs under the heavens safe in the pudding of his restriction to the sea, and the waters shall not go by his mouth. I live on the ocean. Uh, it stops <laughs> all the time at a certain spot. Sometimes you have a storm, it might go up a little bit higher with the wave, but generally it stops at the same place. Now, I've heard 20, 30, 25 years ago, global warming by a, a man who was a vice president of the United States talking about it, the rising up of uh, the ocean and covering things. Well, I'm always thinking, well, why doesn't the land go down rather than the water go up? But where I live, it hasn't changed at all. Well, if it's supposed to go up real high, I would think it would be all over the earth. But it's not where I live, the same place. 
And as he made the foundations of the earth strong, I was by him. I was being in accord in which he rejoiced with, and each day I was glad in front of him at all time. Even when he was pleased of the completing the inhabitable world and was pleased in the sons of men. Jesus was there. Now then, O son, hear me, and blessed are the ones guarding my ways. So we need to pay attention to the things of Jesus. Hear Jesus, hear wisdom, and you should be wise, and you should not seal it up. Tell other people. Blessed is a man who shall listen to me, Jesus, and a man who shall guard my ways, being awake at my doors each day, giving heed at the doorposts of my entrances, and could be referring to the temple. For my issues are the issues of life. Exo thee is an exit. Also, that book of Exodus, leaving the issues um, uh, coming forth from God. These are issues of life. And in them, volition is prepared. We can think about the things of God. Dogs can't, uh, that I know of. My dog Arlo, he created by God just like I was. But did he know God? No. Never heard from him. Never said anything. For my issues are the issues of life, and in them, volition is prepared from the Lord, and we have this gift of God. We're humans, and we can take in all these things. But the ones sinning against me are impious unto their own souls, are hurting themselves, and the ones detesting me love death. So the people that don't want Jesus uh, love death, basically. That's going into Hades. Chapter 9, The Benefits of Wisdom. We'll find out what they are. Hope you join us in Chapter 9. Until then, God bless.